Good morning, everyone. You will have Good to morning. use your wonderful imaginations for Crystal's playing the prelude music to alert us that it's time to start. So let's use our imaginations. Thank you, Crystal. That was great. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we miss people when they're not here, and we can make, make fun of them when they're not. Anyhow, so good morning. It is glad, it is good that we are here to worship the Lord. I will not delay anymore, uh, but it is good that we are here to worship the Lord. It is a beautiful weekend. Finally, we have kind of fall, but it's wonderful. And uh, we also can be thankful that we're not going to get hit with another hurricane. That was on the menu, but it's gone. So those two reasons are good to, uh, reasons to thank God, but also God is worthy to be praised because of who he is anyway, regardless of the weather. Um, so, yes, it is good that we are here, and we want to welcome you to our worship service today and also welcome those who are going to be watching this online. Uh, we hope to be able to see you in person um, in some future time. Hopefully you all got a bulletin as you came in. Um, and if you do have a bulletin, bring it with you because there is a lot of information that you will need to put on your calendars, either at home or on your phone, to remember all of the awesome things that we have going on. So... We're not going to run through them all, but we're going to run through a lot of them. Uh, first thing we have going on this Thursday is the men's Bible study. Tom is going to be leading that at McDonald's at 7 a.m. So for those of you who like to be up that early, please join him in the, that group. It'll be a good study. Also on Sunday coming up, Al Serhal from Central Africa Christian College is going to be here to share with, that, with us about that ministry and everything that has been going on with it. There's a lot of really awesome things that they've been up to over the last few years, and God has really blessed that ministry. And so I hope that you will come out here uh, to hear what all of that is. And also during Sunday school, he'll be here to give some more questions or give some more uh, details and answer some questions about what everything is going on. Uh, so if you can be here to uh, be in both of those hours, that would be a really awesome thing uh, for you and for Al. He's coming here from a very long distance away. So let's make his travel worth it. Um, also coming up December 1st is going to be our monthly potluck. But we are also going to combine our monthly potluck with decorate. We did, right? We're doing decorating on that day, so we decided. Okay, I just want, wanted to make sure. We're also going to be decorating the auditorium for uh, Christmas, the Christmas season. We're going to be a, a week behind on doing that, but it's just how schedules are going to work out. So come fellowship, eat, and we will also spend some time afterwards getting this place look looking like Christmas. Um, so join us with that. There is also, for the potluck, there is a sign-up sheet over. We created a new station called the Sign-Up Station, where we're going to put our, our sign-up sheets. So the sign-up sheet for the potluck is there. Sitting next to the so sign-up sheet for the potluck is the sign-up sheet for the foundations class. Uh, this is a class that we offer usually about once a quarter or so. Uh, to give you an introduction to who we are, what our beliefs are, what our core values are, get a chance to meet Jonathan and myself, and we go through uh, just some history and some theology, some really cool stuff. So if you are interested in doing that, please sign up. Uh, it helps us. We're also going to serve lunch, so that helps us to figure out how much food to buy and how to prepare for that. So that is over there at the sign-up station. Uh, so sign up for both of those. Um, also, there's a couple things going on for Christmas, the Christmas, the kids' Christmas program and the Christmas Eve service. Make sure that you don't miss out on those wonderful opportunities as well. Uh, so go ahead. There's some other things in there to take a gander at. Uh, look over that, save this, and bring it with you so that you can be informed. With all those announcements having been said, let's go ahead and stand and open up our time of worship with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to gather together with fellow believers and to celebrate who you are, to, to lift you up in praise, uh, to sing of your goodness, uh, to give you thanks for all the wonderful things that you've done in our lives, in the past, present, and the things that we look forward to that you will accomplish in the future. I pray that you would speak to us today through the songs, through the words of the message, through your word. Uh, help us to learn more about you and to live out what we learn in our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you all gathered here this morning. We're going to be singing together, worshiping the Lord. And the first song we're going to sing is Build Your Kingdom Here. And so we sing and we celebrate together asking God to bring his kingdom down here on earth. And we are part of that process. God can use us to do that. So let's sing this song together, asking God to build his kingdom here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil our will made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope and wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come invade us. Shout of praise. Yes. Yes. Before we sing our next song together, I want to read from the book of Psalms. This is Psalms 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let's sing together. Walking around 
for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness
be seated as we lead together into our communion meditation. Good morning again. Before I get into the serious part of this message, I would like to report something that when I'm when it's my turn to do the communion message, Pastor Joe always hides my paper. <laughs> And I have to go find it. And today, I had to find it behind his drum stand. He likes to see me uh, sweat it out, you might say. (laughs) And I also heard a joke this morning that I'll get serious, but I heard this this morning that when I was a young boy, I asked my mom, I said, uh, when I grow up, Mom, I want to be a bass player. And my mom said, Joe, You can't do both. (laughs) So anyway. (laughs) All right. Psalm 107.1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Steadfast love. If you are in a storm, he's loving you. If you're out of a storm, he loves you. Never forget the good Lord loves you always. The good Lord loves you always. And that is something to really be thankful for as we approach the Thanksgiving season. I would like to give you a little flavor of my young Thanksgivings. And there's a little caveat here. I'm a member of the Citrus County Sheriff's Department as a volunteer crime watch patrolman. So when I give this first part of the message, please don't turn me in. I think the statute of limitations is over. As I said before, I'm from the backwoods in Missouri. It's said that to get to my grandmother's house, you drove to where the pavement ended, then you got on the dirt road, and then the last little bit you swung in by grapevine. That's not quite true. But anyway, uh, Thanksgiving was really fantastic at her house, and it was very special. It was great food, great large family gathering. It was large. It was special. Most every Thanksgiving, we had two turkeys. This is the bad part. One domestic and one wild turkey. My grandfather would always say the wild turkey flew into the house and broke his neck. There was no turkey season at that time. It may have accidentally ran into some shotgun pellets. I think the statute of limitations is over, plus my grandfather passed away many years ago. But I might still be an accessory, I don't know. My point. Family, friends, giving thanks to the Lord is so special this time of year. So whatever your plans are, remember to really be thankful and praise the Lord. Make it special, making Jesus the focal point of your celebration. Don't take the celebration for granted, because like in my case, most of those people have passed away. In fact, just about all of them. So appreciate Thanksgiving. Thank God, thank Jesus, and thank, be thankful for the time and the family and the friends that you have. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's say our prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather before you today with hearts overflowing with gratitude for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the gift of life, for our loved ones, for the beauty of nature, and for the provisions you provide for our daily needs. May we always remember and cherish these gifts and use them to serve others in your name. Amen.
Folks have greatly uh, enjoyed the opportunity to take a look at the attitude of gratitude. Uh, we've done this over the last uh, few weeks and uh, with uh, Joe and myself uh, kind of alternating preaching back and forth. We've taken a look at thanking God for the past. And folks, that can be very difficult sometimes in looking back because we've had some things happen in our past that we quite honestly wouldn't wish on our worst enemy. Um, but we still learn to put things in perspective and to thank God for the past that we've experienced and how he has brought us to this point, um, as Joe shared last week, and thanking God for the present. Thanking God for this opportunity that is here, that is now, that is in front of us, and that uh, is afforded each of us, that opportunity that is ever present. And today we're going to be thanking God for the future. Now, folks, I, I don't know what the future holds, okay, but I know who holds the future, right? I want to let you know that I, I foresee some uh, beautiful things taking place right here at North Citrus Christian Church. Um, I, it's exciting to see a lot of new people um, connecting to the church, and we have much to be thankful for uh, in our lives, uh, in our work, and in the life of God's church here at North Citrus. We always pray, God, grow your church, and let's never forget that this is his church. Uh, sure, we take ownership. Sure, we call it my church. Yeah, the, I found my church. I'm, I'm connected to the church. Uh, I want to kind of represent the church going from here forward and be a help and carry forth the Great Commission. But it's God's church, and he's doing some great things. Um, we do want to let you know about something very important uh, that is coming up, a little project that is in front of us. In order to uh, take a look at some uh, long-term plans to improve our auditorium here and improve the facilities here, uh, we are launching a uh, campaign, a project uh, here uh, to help uh, to grow as we grow as a church and to kind of turn this auditorium into my, more of a multi-purpose facility. So what are we looking at? We're looking at we're in need of, of some new carpet. Um, with the carpet, we are also looking at the, in looking at the uh, odds and everything working together, the need for, uh, for chairs, new chairs to be laid out. So when you come in on a given day, uh, as we go into the new year and we've raised the money and everything, we'll have new carpet laid down and we'll have chairs. But this will give us the opportunity as well with some of our growing programs that we have here to use this space as well as the space next door at the Life Center for programs such as Trail Life USA and, and American Heritage Girls. And if we want to do some bigger events, we'll have this area too that the chairs will be able to give us an opportunity to do a multi-purpose facility. So we want to uh, provide that flexibility for a growing church. And so over the next six weeks, we're going to be uh, raising funds uh, towards this chair fund, okay, and chair project. So uh, I know it's at the end of the year. Some of you have funds available that you can kind of put, put aside. This is in addition to your regular giving. But over the next six weeks, we're looking at a budget, a roughly uh, project about $11,000 that it's going to take to make that happen. So at any time over the next six weeks, if you're able to give a little extra or if you have something kind of set aside and you want to help towards that, that will help us to continue to grow, uh, help this to be a multi-purpose facility. And then the plans are as we get into the new year, 2025. Are any of you ready to take in a fourth of the next century? Because we're there, okay? The future is there. Um, then we'll be in a position to uh, kind of see that uh, improvement being made. So again, that is kind of designated. It's at the bottom of your bulletin list there. There's a little note there about the chair fund. So if you are given checks or uh, want to designate some things, just put a chair fund or on that. Uh, if you're giving gifts online, you can also designate chair fund towards that. So thank you uh, for that as we look forward to that next uh, six-week window and raising money in that regard. Folks, as I think about the future, there's many things that come to mind. You know, lots of time and energy and effort is put upon trying to figure out the future. How many of you remember when you were kids back in elementary school and they uh, somebody would be creative and they take a piece of paper and they do that little fold thing where it has four things and they figure out okay well you're going to get married to this person and you're going to have so many kids and you're going to live in this house and and you give them a number and they count and they figure it all well it's gone from something as simple as that to now crystal balls and fortune tellers and 
and you're going to see it this year on TV. It's predictions for 2025. What's ahead in the new year? What, what does it look like? Uh, you'll have prognosticators. People going to figure out who's going to win the college football playoff system this year. Uh, you, people involved in, in tarot card reading and palm readers and, and even fortune cookies. You can't even go to a good Chinese restaurant without trying to figure out what your future is. Uh, astrology, it's in, in the paper. Every, you're just sitting there trying to figure out your signs. and th- uh, Folks, people are constantly looking to try to figure out the future. When ultimately, we really need to turn to God in faith. And that's what we need to do in thanking God for the future. I'll be honest with you, I really don't want to know the future. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want things planned out for the next year that I know exactly what's going to happen when and where, or five years or ten years, because I know that there's going to be some tough times that are ahead. I don't necessarily want to know what those are. I want to enjoy the season of time now. And when the time comes that it becomes the future, then God will provide the strength. God will provide the direction that is needed. I want to share with you a passage that comes from Hebrews chapter 11. As we think about putting our faith in God's hands when it comes to our future, we read a little verse of scripture that says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Folks, honestly, none of us know what the future will hold. But thank God, we know who holds the future. And we've got to exercise our faith. We've got to say, Lord, you know, this is in your hands. I don't know what this looks like. I don't know what's around the next corner as far as health is concerned. I don't know as, as we begin to age and as time goes on. I had somebody this week, I, I have to share this with you. I just got my hair cut, okay, so it gets shorter and stuff. And so sometimes, quite honestly, I get a little lazy in the morning when I have a real short haircut. Sometimes I just get out of the shower and it's like, oh, I'm good to go because, you know, it's just the way it lays. It's fine. So on this particular, and Tom, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, yes, you know. God only created a few perfect heads. The rest he put hair on. Okay, so yes, we're, we're good to get. So I just let it go. I didn't even do hair gel, which I usually always do hair gel. And as the day went on, later in the day, somebody who was well-meaning, okay, just said to me, it's like, oh, I didn't realize you had gray hair. And I thought to myself, I didn't realize I had gray hair either. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm going to put hair gel on tomorrow morning. You know, I used to think and look in the mirror, and it's like, oh, cool, my blonde hairs are coming back. But then my eyesight's not what it used to be. So I'm realizing now that I am graying up, you know. And, uh, you know, my little uh, hairline's making a beeline towards my behind. And, I, you know, this is not good. You know, I'm getting older. We, we can't keep the future from happening. It is up on us. And it's so important for us to know that we hold on to the fact that faith is not hoping that God can. Faith is not just taking a, a coin and flipping it in the air and saying, I hope it turns up heads. Faith is knowing that he will take care of us in the future. And faith, on a deeper level, is thanking God in advance for what he has already done. Thanking God in advance for what he has already done. Folks, that's hard. It's hard when you're in the middle of a difficult situation. It's hard when, when you're trying to make uh, your, your month meet at the, at the end and the money's not there. It's hard when you're, you're trying to figure out what, what's next with doctor's appointments and, and here and there and everywhere. And you have family and friends and, and, and you're dealing with death and you're dealing with all kinds of issues and family dynamics and tension and, and just everything happening. It's hard to thank God for what he's already done in advance how he's already worked out that situation. It's amazing God has a great track record. You look back over your past, he's always managed to come through. He's always managed to get us to this point. And folks, he's not going to stop now in the future. So we might as well just go ahead and thank him in advance for what he will do as we move forward. We will see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yet we need to view our future through God's eyes and if necessary, uh, put on shades. Why? Because as a Christian, my future is so bright, I have to wear shades. 
But it's just the way it is. We as Christians have the brightest future that's out there. Somebody has said for the, for the unrepentant sinner, this is as good as it gets right here on this side of heaven. This is as good as it gets. But for the saved Christian who has given their life to Jesus Christ and accepted the blood of Jesus Christ, it only gets better from here. And your future is so bright that you have to wear shades. We need to realize that, that the best for the Christian is in front of us, not behind us. The best is yet to come. It's so much more than this old world has to offer it is looking forward to fulfilling God's purpose and plan in our life. Uh, what a beautiful thing. Uh, why is it beautiful? Because I can foresee that this baptistry is going to be used more often. I, I foresee that people are going to come to Christ, that people are going to come to the, the moving into the area, that people are going to come to understand God's word. People are going to understand what God has called them to do. People are going to understand that I need to give my heart, my soul, my life to him in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to be here for those moments. I thank God in advance for those moments. New Christians coming to know Christ and being baptized into Christ, immersed in, under the waters in Christian baptism uh, with understanding that that's a new life that's in front. I, I want to see people connect to his church. I want to see people uh, be a part of the church as, as we represent the church, as we head out into the community. Uh, we're looking to uh, start new ministries as we move forward in, in, in the area of missions and realizing what missions ministry looks like and not just support with 13% of our uh, regular offering that goes to missions. And we're going to hear more about that next week with Al Sir Hall being here. I want to encourage you to come. Come for 9 o'clock for his uh, time together uh, for the Sunday school hour and then stay for the 1030 worship. We want to support him and what he's doing. But it's more than just the missions. It's representing the church in the community. As we represent the church, we need to be a part. We need to uh, commit ourselves to you know, be members here, to say, hey, we represent North Citrus Christian Church, uh, but for the sake of representing God's effort in the world. And yes, I look forward to meeting new people. You don't know how many new people are going to enter into your life in the future. For some of you, that may be uh, your future spouse. <laughs> For the others of you, that may be a neighbor that moves in down the street, maybe a new coworker, maybe a new boss. It may, may be who, who knows who new people, maybe grandchildren, maybe uh, other people or, or nieces or nephews. Or, you never know what new people are going to enter into your life. And that is part of the opportunity that we have to share God's love with them. Uh, new births, new life that comes around the future. I want you to think just for a minute. Take some time as you work through your sermon notes and before we dig into the Philippians passage to answer the question, what makes your future bright? What makes your future bright? And yes, I want you to think from a Christian perspective. What makes your future bright? Jot some things down there. How are you different than others? What makes your future bright? As you continue to do that, turn with me back to Philippians chapter 3. So we've taken some select passages from Philippians and looking at the attitude of gratitude, thanking God for the past, the present, and now the future. I want to share with you from Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. Whatever was to my profit, Paul says, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. And I want to know Christ. And I want to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain from the resurrection from the dead. For the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at points of light to a bright future. Some points of light that Paul lays out in this passage. You see, light shines at its brightest when darkness is at its darkest. 
and we are called to shine light. You may say, well, Jonathan, we live in a crazy world. There's just so much going on, and, and, and things are dark, and I, I just, I don't know, this generation and this, that, and the other, I just don't, I don't see how you're excited about the Well, guess what? If you are the light, which God says you are, you're going to shine brighter in this darkness than you've ever shown before because God gives you this light. So let's take a look as we are called to be light. First of all, how do we define what is to our profit? Paul says, whatever was to my profit, I now consider a loss. Now, first of all, let's take a look at Paul's life. He uh, had gone through the, the, the Jewish system. He was circumcised, following the Old Testament law, Hebrew of Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. Uh, he was zealous for a cause, uh, uh, so much so that he was persecuting the church before he became a Christian. Uh, he was, as far as righteousness, he was legalistic. He kept the law to a T. He had every reason to say, well, look at me. Look, look what I've accomplished. And perhaps you take a look at those measures, those standards of health. Well, I've kept myself in good health, and I've done this, and I'm proud of myself. Or, you know, I've worked hard, and I've got a nest egg built up, and I've got wealth now that I don't have to worry about this or worry about, oh, you know, I'm successful. I would consider myself to be a successful person, and we're, we're successful in our, in our marriage, and we've, we're successful in our family, and, and look how things have come, and, and oh, well, look at us. You know, we're number one. We're number one until you're not number one. Then you kind of fall. All those things are here and there and then gone. It's so important to realize that profit is not what the world tells us. Rather, we are to consider that a loss for the sake of Christ. Many of you are familiar through the years of a famous baseball player by the name of Ted Williams, known as the greatest hitter of all time. In fact, he lived right here in Citrus County. Uh, for years, there was a Ted Williams Hall of Fame that was down in Citrus Hills. He still has family that lives here. Uh, Boston Red Sox, and he was in the military, and he was just known as the greatest hitter. And they, they knew him. He was so great that he had a brilliant mind that after he died, he had put it in his will that because he was such a genius in hitting, that they would freeze his brain in a cryogenics lab. And to this day, Ted Williams' physical brain is in a cryogenics lab in the state of Arizona because he's going to help some future people with baseball. And, and if there's a way to bring back the brain, then they can help them learn how to hit more effectively. Folks, if we're looking at life from that perspective and, and that that's to the profit of, of helping in that regard or helping in this, we're, we're missing the boat. He, he says, what is considered my profit, everything's considered a loss and, but with the surpassing greatness of Christ. Is there anything better than knowing Christ as Lord there's only one life and it will soon be passed. And only things done for Christ will last. He goes on to say that I consider them rubbish. Everything else in life has no meaning, has no purpose. It's rubbish. It's garbage. The thought here is it's actually like fertilizer that you would put on your lawn. That's, it's just nothing. It's, it's, it's stinky. You don't want a part of it. If you are so focused on that for your future, you're so focused on, on, on what I'm going to get and how I'm going to get it and taking care of myself, then you've missed the point of coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord. Our future should all be about standing right before God because of Jesus Christ. Not anything that we've done. Not anything where I look back and say, well, look what I've accomplished. Well, guess who gave you the ability to do that? <laughs> guess who gave you the brain and gave you the ability to, to be able to lead projects and, and, and be successful and raise a family? And, and it's not by being good. It's not by what Paul would refer to as keeping the law, which he did to a T. No, it's not about uh, look at me in comparison to the rest of the world. It's only through God and it's only through faith in Jesus Christ that we can stand before a holy God. 
uh, love the worship today. Thank you so much for your, your emphasis, and I could, I could see it throughout the worship, the emphasis upon where we've been, where we are, where we are to go. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. He, he's the one the constant and will last throughout all eternity. And the promise there is that we can know Christ and we can share in the power of his resurrection. And that's so important for us to get to know him and not just to know about him. Now, are there people in your life that, oh, yeah, well, I, I, I know about them. Or you, you, just, you, know, you know their name, maybe you know their face, you, know, you have some acquaintance with them. But then there's other people in your life that you really know. Other people in life that have shared with you, maybe in your family, maybe close friends, that you know. Christ desires that you know him. Not just that you know him. Not that this is your parents' faith, your grandparents' faith, or just because I go to church on Sundays, I know about Christ. Oh, yeah, I know about that. Oh, yeah, I know about the Bible. But have you got to read the Bible? Have you got to know Christ on a personal level? We can know Christ for the purpose of sharing in the power of his resurrections, for the purpose of sharing in his suffering. When he grants us faith to get through, we are so grateful because the only way out is through, and God has brought us through so much, and he's going to take us through so much more. Now, there's a lot of good that's yet to come, and I, I want to soak it all in. But, folks, I, I'm not so naive to think that there's not some tough times ahead, too. But it's okay because we're thanking God that he's bringing us through those. My dad always told me, John, Jonathan, he goes, there's no guarantees in this life, only in the life to come. There's hard goodbyes ahead. There's tragedies. But there's also hellos and triumphs. And we just need to trust God through our faith in him that he will take us through. And so we continue to shine that point of light as we press on and take a look at verses 12 through 14 of Philippians chapter 3. Paul says, not that I've already obtained all of this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. How wonderful it is that God gives us the strength, that God gives us the courage to keep on keeping on. Uh, we keep going, even when times are tough, we, we, we stay consistent, we, we know that the future lies ahead of us, and we find our way through. I have an opportunity to work with lots of people that deal with grief and loss on a regular basis. That's my job. I'm part of an organization with Friends of Citrus that our mission is to provide help, hope, and healing for people in grief. And quite honestly, I have some people come to me on a regular basis and say, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm ready to check out. I, 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 the best years of my life are behind me, and I'm not interested in, in revisiting where we're going from here forward. I, I've lost my purpose. I've lost my meaning. Folks, it's so important for us to realize that God has not finished with us yet. He, he has created us, and, and he has in mind things for us still to come. It may not be the best that it's always been. It may not even be better than where you are right now, but there's still a lot of good to be had in life. And God is working through us. So I encourage you to keep on keeping on. Apologize I didn't pop that up earlier. But you can pick up the keeping there. Number six, forgetting what is behind. Is it important to remember? Yes. Definitely believe it's important to remember our past. But folks, we can't stay there. <laughs> We can't stay in our past. It's important for us to cherish the memories, but always leave room to create new ones. And some of you are burdened by your past. You know, maybe things have happened to you physically or that it comes with you and you have chronic diseases or, or things that you just can't overcome. Or, or maybe things have happened in your past or maybe you've been abused uh, uh, physically or, or sexually or verbally. Uh, maybe there's other things that have happened that have financially that have set you back. But folks, we cannot be 
bound by our past. We need to forget what is behind. And when the devil reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. Folks, we are thanking God for the future. He will not be the prince of this world for too much longer. He will not roam about freely on this earth. He has a home eternally cast into the fires of hell. He will not continue to roam. He will not continue to reign on this earth. God is sovereign. God will reign. Folks, it's so important for us to put the past in perspective. Beautiful poem, which I have uh, shared over the years, I just want to share with you briefly. And that is to keep our focus here and now. A poem by Helen Malicote that simply says, I am. I was regretting the past, and I was fearing the future. And suddenly my Lord was speaking. My name is I am. He paused. I waited. He continued. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. And when you live in the future with its problems and its fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. But when you live in this moment, it is not hard, for I am here. My name is I am. Folks, are you fearing something in the future? Know that God is with you every step of the way. He was with you in the past when the past was present. And he'll be with you in the future when the future becomes present. He is here now, I am, and he will continue with us every step of the way. And so we are straining toward what is ahead. Straining toward what is ahead. Keeping our focus. Moving forward. I had a very difficult situation come up this week, and a close friend uh, that I've been working with who ended up in ICU and had a visit uh, with them and with some other friends that were there. And some people who weren't uh, Christians were there with me, and I had one lady just ask me, and she goes, why? Why doesn't God give us signs? Why doesn't God give us signs? And I answered her, I said, he does. I think we're just looking in the wrong places. You know, we have this race of life. We are called to press on towards the goal. It's just so many times when we're running around that track and we're straining toward what is ahead, we get distracted. <laughs> We get distracted by the people to our left and to the people to our right. We begin to look back and kind of see where we are in the race in comparison to the others. We, we, we look around. We look, look at the crowd. We, we start looking inside. Am I going to have enough strength to do this? And, oh, maybe, maybe I need to do this. Or, and we look down. And, and, but we are called uh, to look up, to keep our eyes on Jesus, to continue pressing on towards the goal to win the prize that is before us. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Beautiful passage comes from Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. Hebrews 12. I believe Paul might be the writer of this as well. He shares, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Folks, are you at a stage of your life that's like, you know, I just don't know what the future holds. I, I, I just don't know what this looks like. It, it can't be any better than what it's been. It's just I'm getting weaker, I'm getting older, and this is happening in the world, and this and this and that. And keep your eyes on 
Jesus. Keep pressing towards the goal to win the prize. Run with perseverance because God has a plan. And your future's so bright, you have to wear shades. Your future's so bright because God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. What you're experiencing here and now is only temporary. It's just a dot on the number line of eternity. And boy, we're so, so involved in this little dot that we've made it bigger and we just think it's our whole life and it just consumes us. But no, what we do in that dot's very important, but it's just a dot. And eternity goes forever and ever. And how long is forever? It's a long time. Okay, It's forever. But folks, we need to get perspective. We need to be in a position that we realize what's happening. Now that's a bright future. As you think about the future, I want you to get some perspective. The story is told of a man who was doing some traveling and uh, he was very interested in the culture and places that he would go to travel. And he had traveled into this foreign country. And uh, he was very involved in maybe bringing back some souvenirs or having things shipped back. And, and so he walked into this uh, tapestry uh, place that he had never seen a tapestry shop before. And as he walked into this tapestry shop, he, he saw tapestries that, that were draped up on the wall, hanging from the walls, and beautiful pictures that were just kind of laid out. He'd take a look at the price of one. He's like, oh, my. Mm, oof, it's kind of expensive. And he went to the next one. It's like, okay, well, that one's interesting. And he came to the back of the shop, and he saw one that was hanging. And it had absolutely no design to it whatsoever. It was just seemed like threads that were just kind of stuck out and, and just colors that had no scheme to it. And he looked at it, and he pulled the price. Down. It was the most expensive tapestry rug in the entire shop. And he looked at it again, and he's like, I don't get it. I don't even, at that time, the owner of the shop comes over. He goes, may I help you, sir? He, yeah, he goes, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the States, and I've come over, and I was looking at the, the, the beautiful artistic work. He goes, I'm looking at everything. He said, but this one tapestry rug makes no sense to me. He goes, I'm looking at it. It, it has no design. It has no purpose. I, I just don't get it. But yet it's the most expensive rug in the entire shop. The owner of the shop looks at him. He says, oh, oh, sir. <laughs> he goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're looking on the wrong side. <laughs> Come over here and see its beauty. And as he came over to the other side of the rug, he saw the most beautiful design and tapestry rug that he had ever seen in his entire life. Focus, you're thinking about your future. Don't be looking at the wrong side. It's real easy to get discouraged. It's real easy just to kind of throw it all away. It's just go easy to say, well, I'm old, got nothing else to offer in this world. No, 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 no. God's got a purpose. God's got a plan. He ain't done with you yet. Not just here, but in the life to come. You see, the goal of the Christian is to get to heaven. You better believe it. We've got heaven waiting for us. But folks, in the meantime, you've got a purpose. You've got a plan. And that is also to take as many people with us as possible. So you've got a mission to get on board with the Great Commission, to go and to make disciples and to baptize and to teach. It's not just about taking care of ourselves. It's talking about taking care of your neighbor. It's talking about taking care of your family member. It's talking about praying for them and, and reaching out to them and sharing God's love with them. It's about discipleship. We are called to fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ. Indeed, heaven is a wonderful place. Folks, when it's all said and done, what will it look like? All the things that we work towards and fight for, and well, it's nice we had a nice little future, and it's nice the things were kind of laid out and but what's going to count for all eternity with Jesus in heaven? Folks, uh, let me give you a little newsflash. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this. But both heaven and hell are eternal. 
So it's not like we're just going to have a little party down there. Or boy, we're just going to give the devil some competition. No, that's eternal punishment for those who do not accept the blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Christ. You see, God gave the greatest gift of all. He gave of himself. He allowed himself to come down to this earth as the son and the story of Christmas. He came, God in the flesh. He came to be God with us so that we might experience the best future that could ever be experienced. So that we might experience eternity in heaven with him forever. Folks, I don't know where you're at in your life. Perhaps there's some of you today that's like, well, you know, I just kind of live my life and just kind of, you know, check it as I go. And well, get back into God's word. Get back into understanding what God has called you to do. Understand that God wants you to, yes, uh, turn from your sins. Yes, he wants you to believe and confess and repent. He wants you to be baptized, immersed, uh, making that decision on your own to give your life to Christ. It's a free will that we make that decision in the likeness of Jesus' death burial and resurrection what a beautiful time that is and then to exercise that faith to exercise that faith as we march forward into the future to be faithful and to reach out so that yes we might go to heaven but yes we can take as many people with us as possible let's pray father god thank you for being god Lord, I know there's a day coming and soon when we'll look back and we'll just say, wow, why, why didn't I see that? Why didn't I get that? I know the Bible was true after all. I, I, I know that all these things were going to happen. I got so caught up in everything going on in this world. I got so caught up in things in my own life. And I got so caught that I lost, I lost the faith. I lost the vision. I lost the focus. Father, help us to focus clearly on the future that you have laid out for us because our future is so bright we have to wear shades. Father, because of what you have done through giving your son Jesus Christ upon the cross of Christ. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, you're here this morning. You're not here by accident. I believe that 100%. I believe that there is something that brought you here, perhaps uh, moving uh, into Citrus County, uh, perhaps uh, driving by and reading the sign, maybe uh, driving by a friend invited you, maybe, maybe you just happened upon this church, maybe you just happened here. God just doesn't happen. God is behind those sources. There's a reason why you're here. And there's a reason why you're hearing these messages from myself and Joe. And there, there's a reason why God is moving you deeper into his word. Maybe you've been comfortable for where you've been for a long, long time. And I'm not interested in really making any changes. Well, guess what? God is interested in making changes in your life because he wants to grow you and mature you. For the purpose of not only taking care of yourself for all eternity, but reaching out to others. He, he wants to use you. He is not finished with you yet. If you're here this morning, you have questions about that, I encourage you, ask others around you, ask us, ask the leaders of the church. We're here to help. We want to walk you through that process, okay? We want to do life together with you, and ultimately for the purpose of introducing you to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, so that you can be faithful and continue on. We, we want you to connect to his church, because we have a job to represent his church, not only here, but in the community. The work of the church is not what takes place here on a given Sunday or Tuesday nights with uh, Cheryl Life or American Heritage Girls or Wednesday nights with life groups or other things going on here. No, that's not the life of the church. It's not the work of the church. It takes place outside the doors of the church. Let's go. Let's make a difference. I'm standing as we sing. I encourage you to come this morning. Count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God is never late 
working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. joy when my heart is heavy for all my days yes I will I count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high. thank you, God, for doing it again. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us that has been in the past, that is now, and forever will be. And Father, right now, I just want to pray a blessing over everyone who's here. Lord, I just pray that as we know there's the good, the bad, and the ugly in front of us, we, we don't know what that looks like. We don't know what is to come. But Lord, I'm just praying that you just bless everyone that is here that you help them through those times that may be a little tough, that you help them celebrate those times that are, that are wonderful. And Lord, that you just help them to hold on to that faith that will last for all eternity. And then Lord, give us the courage to reach out to others with the love of God through Jesus Christ. Give us the courage to realize it's not about ourselves, but it's reaching out and making a difference and going and making disciples and having them join us in heaven for all eternity. Lord, bless the folks here now as we head into the season of Thanksgiving. And may we always continue that attitude of gratitude. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it?
Returning to claim his bride Like the altar Keep it burning See the lamb who rose A roaring lion Nor praise you God our Father Nor praise you Christ the Son All praise you the Holy Spirit Our God has overcome The King everyone.